I want to do like a welcome back, guys, and happy to happy new year. Okay. So ready. Welcome back, guys. <laughs> Welcome back guys and happy new year. This is Coffee with Cantu. I'm Benny. And I'm John. I said it before and I'll say it again. Life moves pretty fast. It's not about personality matrices and charts. It's all about the bumps in your heart. The show is brought to you by Cantu Cycling Wheels. We're a small business that specializes in hand-built custom wheels located just north of Houston, Texas. In today's episode, we'll cover the Cantu Gravel Line and a 2018 Outlook. We'll also do a recap of Cyclocross Nationals, and I'll do a breakdown of, actually John will do a breakdown. I'll do a breakdown. John's going to break down our disc brake hub. It's 2018, Happy New Year. Woo! Let, let that sink in, 2018. Um, new year, new wheels, some fun announcements, and more adventures with Sasha, which is our big white sprinter van. Um, let's start off with new products. John, what do we have in store? What can we disclose to our audience? We're excited to add two new wheels to our gravel line. The Riot, which is a 650B, and uh, the Rova, which is a 700C. We'll go over that a little more in depth a little later when we cover our gravel line. We'll also option, we also have an option of center lock hubs for select models. And for the matchy matchy people, we'll also offer special order custom colored hubs. Okay guys, diving into some fun announcements. Fun announcements! Mark your calendars! February 18th, we are hosting a gravel event with our friends at Race Ready Repair. Um, it's called the Prison City Gravel Challenge. It's taking place in our backyard through the Sam Houston National Forest. It's about an hour north of Houston. Uh, we'll have two distances, 33 and 60 miles. Check out our Facebook event, Prison City Gravel Challenge, or bikereg.com forward slash Prison City Gravel. This year we partnered with Spinistry and they're sponsors of their Gravel King series, and we're giving away two sets of wheels. One to a male and one to a female. So you get a wheel, you get a wheel, you get a wheel! <laughs> Every entry into their one of their races, you get an entry for the wheel set. We're also the official wheel sponsor of the Castell Grind, so anyone that is registered for the Castell Grind will also be able to receive a discount on a set of Cantu wheels. Last but not least, we're helping host the Davy Crockett Classic, hosted by Local Bike Racing. John is the roadie in the relationship, so I'll let him talk more about that. This is a three race format, time trial, criterium, and road race. It's in Crockett, Texas on February 10th and 11th. We'll have the links to all these events and uh, sponsorship Hello. information below. Um, we want you guys to support these events if you can, if you're able to. I know most of these are in Texas, so all you Texas folks come out and uh, support these race promoters. They're helping us out, and that's what we do in the cycling community. Even ones that aren't in Texas. Even you ones. Come, 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 come race. Oklahoma it's Oklahoma peeps. Kansas. Louisiana, Louisiana peeps. Kansas, Nebraska. There's a bunch of people. Sure. There's a lot of people coming. <laughs> All right, guys, it's time to switch gears. We decided to move the party inside the Cantu Wheel Studio, so welcome. Um, we lost a little bit of daylight and it also got a little colder. So, switching gears to some wheel talk with a growing gravel scene, we're excited to expand our Cantu gravel line. We now have three options for our gravel wheels. The Rebel, which we introduced last year, the Riot, our 650B, and then our newest addition is the Rova, which is our deep, de deeper depth rim profile. Let's start with the Rebel here that I have in my hand. What are some key features of this wheel? 
I'll start off by saying the Rebel is our most versatile wheel we offer. Besides gravel, you can set it up for cyclocross, or you can throw on a set of road tires and ride the road with it. The key features include an asymmetrical design, it's tubeless compatible, it's a straight pull with a 28 spoke setup, three cross lacing pattern. So explain to me the benefit of this asymmetrical wheel rim design. Having the disc brake hub changes the bracing angles of the spokes. An asymmetrical rim offsets the spoke holes to one side between two to three millimeters to correct the angle of the spokes and balance out the spoke tensions. With even spoke tensions, you get less broken spokes and builds for a more durable wheel. Let's move on to the Riot and Robo. What's the biggest difference that sets it apart from the Rebel? The wider internal width and the deeper depth make the Riot and the Rova a more specific gravel wheel. Both are boasting a 24 millimeter internal width and a 35 millimeter deep hookless rim profile. The Riot and the Rova virtually have identical rim profiles except for the Riot's a 650B and the Rova's a 700C. However, you can take the Riot an extra step further and make it compatible with the 700C setup by putting a 47 or 48C tire on it, given you have the space in your frame to accommodate it. All of our wheels are personally hand built by John, your Cantu wheel builder, with Supreme CX three spokes and Supreme double square secure lock nipples. You have options to choose from black or silver spoke colors and a wide array of decal colors. To see all the customization options, you can go to CantuWheels.com and click on custom build. Me, John, our teammate Brent Turner, 60 hours of driving, 6 races, 1 podium, and 1 awesome trip to cap off our season. So, what was your take on Reno? How did you like the whole setup, course, everything? What was your take? Different from anything we have here. <laughs> there's, a, <laughs> there's a lot of elevation there. Um, you know, the altitude played a different part in the race, uh, you know, course design and, and features, you know, within the first half lap, there were five obstacles. Second half of the course was a, a really big hill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you got to play on the side of it a whole lot, up, down, around, and everything, and it was a, it was a good time. It was, it was tough, it was tricky, but uh, we, we had a blast doing it. Yeah, probably the toughest course, um, apart from Jingle Cross, that I've, like, personally, I think I've been on all season. And I don't know if it was just I, getting back from the holidays and trying to, like, get my legs into that rhythm again. Um, or the 30-hour drive. Or the 30-hour drive. Went hard from the gun went a little too hard from the gun and that was the part of the problem. I went red immediately and never recovered. Um, 30 fourths the way through the race, I'm coming around a corner and all of a sudden I feel da -da 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 like this and tires flat. I hit a rock in a in the in the mud somewhere and it just it flatted the tubular. So I ran you know, halfway around the course and back to the pit to grab my my backup bike and took off again and all at that point only had one lap left. So didn't didn't end so well for me. How about your second race? What race was that? Second race was an industry race. Did a lot better. I got a front row call up this time, which was made it a lot more fun from the start. Um, front row. And I, I was, I, I managed my efforts a lot more and definitely came up with a lot better result. I ended up 12th out of some around 60 or so people. So it was a lot better than I expected and uh, turned out well. What about you? What about me? How'd you do? Wait, I know how she did. <laughs> you might want to know. All right, so my first race was probably my worst race of the season. I raced on Friday. I raced towards the end of the week. Um, Friday, I did the Masters Women 30 to 34. We actually had a really small group 
um, smaller than what I expected, about 14, 15 riders. And I got a front row call up. I was, uh, I think, third, third to call up, which was really cool. I'm like, all right, I feel really good. I was sitting in sixth place going into the last lap and up on that technical hill all off camber. Um, you had some exposed rocks on some steep uh, off camber drop-ins, I would say. <laughs> so I kind of, I cut my tire on that and it's my first and last flat of the season. That was the last lap and pretty much I ran to the finish line rolling my bike and three three other girls passed me so I got ninth um, which I mean top 10 finish I can't complain about that but I was I was pretty frustrated I was pretty disappointed with that race um, I really had it in me to like redeem myself the next morning in the industry race I was just happy to have a clean race that was my goal and I got it got better with each lap and finally um, I worked my way up to fourth place and I got I got on that podium which is so exciting um, even though it's an industry race it's just standing up there on the nationals podium it made me hungry to do it again so we are coming back next CX Nats uh, this December in Louisville I'm I really I really want to stand on that podium again in my age group this time so that's that's one of my big goals um, so that's my my race report is kind of like it went from ugly to, to race one to like finishing the season out on the bright side yeah we had two flats all season and they just both Two flats in just happened in nationals. I mean, our teammate Brent did really well in his second race and also his first race. He raced the non-championship in his age division, a very stacked um, age division, 45-49. Um, I think he ended up 18th um, Tuesday right. in the non-championship and Thursday in his age group, 45-49 he ended up 24th so that was a huge field as well to tell you how tough that field was um on the podium was adam meyerson and paul bonds so um also congrats to paul bonds for his third place in that race uh texas our texas uh fellow racer um so that's it that that ends our cyclocross season we want to give a huge shout out to our cyclocross team. You guys have been awesome. Uh, thanks for putting your everything out there on the weekends and racing with us since September. TJ from Houston asked, what gravel races are you racing this year? Go ahead. Dirty Kanza, Gravel Worlds, Land Run, um, Castell Grind, uh, a lot of the different spinistry events, Chain Ring Maskers coming up this weekend. Um, yeah. but this is, by the time this comes out, we'll have already been back. So, uh, wish us luck. This question's from Brad. I've been riding Chris King Hubs for over 15 years. I like the rebuild grease process after a year of riding for servicing. How easy or difficult is this process with our hubs? This is our disc brake hub. You can take, pull it apart with pulling the end cap off. You take a 17 millimeter open end wrench and anything that's flat will work to slide in the slot here and then bust it loose here. You'll unscrew the end like such. The hub body slides off. You can make sure you keep all three paws in there with the, the seal that'll drop off like there. You can re-grease the end here. You'll also have one spacer that also goes in the inside and that's all that'll be in the inside. 
You have the 6902 bearing here and you have a 6802 bearing here. Everything will press in and press out very easily. And then reassemble is the same process, just backwards. It slides in, small twist, seal goes on. The end cap goes in the end, it twists on. 17 mil one more time. Tightens up just like such and then the end cap goes back on and you are done thanks for tuning in for our first episode of the year um, we hope to keep bringing you guys good content um, inform you about our wheels take you on our journey Please follow us on Facebook and Instagram. If you have any questions, suggestions, comments, please post them down below. Um, John. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. <laughs>